From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Well, the season has come to an end at Bridger Bowl. We take a look at the season by the numbers and see what people are excited about for next year. How does the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks count and study the creatures of this habitat? I'm Chet Lehman at the Bud Lily Fishing Access Site on the Gallatin River. We'll show you those tools this week. Well, good morning, uh, Southwest Montana. You were there, now you're like, here, the magic I, of television. I tell you what, Crazy. that's it. Uh, Cat-like reflexes, I can be anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, uh, TV technology. Yeah. Yeah. Chet Lehman, Jane McDonald, Matt Elwell on this lovely Monday morning. Nice. Uh, the it's sun gorgeous. coming up over Southwest Montana. It's a mm -hmm. uh, double-edged sword. It, we, mm. We've all been asking for the warm temperatures. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, here they are. Uh, yeah. Early morning temperatures above the freezing mark. Keep in mind, a lot of these areas that picked up the heavy snow a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. have snow. Yep. And it hasn't stopped melting overnight. That's my yard. Yeah. 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 Uh, mid 30s in Belgrade, uh, 31 in Butte. Uh, the temperature is expected to be back into the uh, 40s by the mid morning, 50s and 60s by the afternoon. We are looking at fairly windy conditions as you get later in the day. The clouds will be on the increase as you get later in the day as well. Uh, our temperature is expected to continue to stay on the mild side. At least for a couple of days. I'm going to take a look at our current snowpack much more in just a few minutes. Looking forward to it, Matt. 631. Well, these temperatures are nice, like Matt said, but with the snow still on the ground from recent storms, it's a reminder that flood risk could be higher in the next couple of days. Galton County officials remind residents to make sure if they have culverts in ditches on their property to keep them clear as snow begins to melt. Officials also say right now is a good time to check to see if you have flood insurance, especially since many policies have a 30 day waiting period. Now would be a good time to make sure you are covered before it's too late. Well, after over 250 inches of snow at the Bridger Bowl ski area, the ski resort closed for the season yesterday. They decided to close this weekend because of the war warming weather this week. Bridger Bowl officials tell MTN that the resort had a nearly record breaking season with the amount of visitors that came through the area. Yeah, topping upwards of 300,000 skiers this season. Now, even though the season is coming to an end, visitors still happy with how great the season turned out to be. It's been an amazing season. We've had a lot of really good snow days. A couple that we didn't get here until you know, almost 10 o'clock or 11 because the traffic was so long. Everybody wanted to get out. It's been very good. Um, it's, there's a lot of powder. Usually we try to get out a lot so that um, when it closes, we have lots of fun and we have some fun next year. Of course you will. Oh. Discovery Ski Area also had its last day this week, and there are still about two weeks left to ski Big Sky. Closing date there Sunday, April 23rd. That is just precious. Good stuff. It looked like a beautiful day. Yeah, hope they had a great time skiing and snowboarding. Yep. <laughs> well, the Galta County Sheriff's Office is getting ready to hold their annual Public Safety Academy in just a few weeks. Our uh, Kristen Merkel shows us the types of programs you can expect and how you can actually sign up. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office Public Safety Academy is kicking off on April 26th and they're looking for more people to sign up for this fun and educational event. People love it because uh, it's an opportunity to kind of peek behind the curtain and see what it is that we do. Gallatin County community members are welcome to join GCSO's Public Safety Academy to experience what law enforcement does on a daily basis for the community. Gallatin County Sheriff Dan Springer says this academy helps build a better connection between law enforcement and citizens. It helps build a community and kind of a uh, relationship between ourselves and the community, which is really important. The academy is free to the public. It's every Wednesday night from 6 to 9 p.m., April 26 through June 14th. The academy covers search and rescue, the coroner's office, the detention center, as well as day-to-day -day law enforcement. You know, it's really important that they understand the work that we do. Uh, there's right now in this day and age, there's a lot of misperceptions out there as to what it is and who we are. Sheriff Springer says they're hoping for 20 to 30 people to sign up. We want to fairly keep, keep it fairly intimate. Uh, we want it to be comfortable enough to be asking questions. Springer wants to show the community where their support is going. Obviously, this community supports us a lot. They put support us with their words. They support us with their money. And um, it's our opportunity to kind of show this is what you get with your with your money and this is what we're doing for you. Information on how to sign up for the Academy is on our website. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. All right, thank you very much, Kristen. Now switching gears to the national scene. Previously, undisclosed trips totaling hundreds of thousands of dollars 
given to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas from a prominent conservative billionaire is sparking a debate over ethics in the Supreme Court justices. Justice Thomas on Friday confirmed he received some trips over the years, but did not report it because he didn't think he had to. Our Joe St. George looks at the long-standing controversy over the ethics that governs our nation's top court and how a push to strengthen rules is heating up this week in Washington. Ethics involving members of Congress is pretty clear. In fact, online there are pages and pages of documents detailing when a member of Congress can accept a gift and when they can't. But come with me on a short walk across the street from the Capitol. Over here at the Supreme Court, justices follow a completely different set of rules. Rules that some say need to change. One reason for the push for change is because of how influential Supreme Court justices are. From rulings on abortion last year to anticipated rulings on voting rights and race this year, their impact is as great as ever. Ethics rules for judges just are different. And that is where Charles Jay, a law professor at Indiana University, helps us understand what is going on at the high court. Take, for instance, a code of ethics. The House and the Senate have one. So does the White House, the Supreme Court, does not. Jay says the court is deeply rooted in tradition. Adopting an ethics policy has been a controversial idea. I think there probably is a feeling within the Supreme Court that they are a unique kind of court, that they are not subject to the regulation of mere mortals. Ethics at the Supreme Court is in the spotlight again after ProPublica, a nonprofit journalism website, reported on lavish trips valued in the hundreds of thousands of dollars given to Justice Clarence Thomas by a prominent conservative donor. While federal law for decades has required justices to list their financial information, including some gifts, something known as the personal hospitality exemption has existed. Basically, if a justice thought someone was being nice to them as a person as opposed to their work as a judge, they wouldn't have to disclose it. Even something like a private jet ride could be kept private. That exemption, though, went away last month. Justice Thomas, in a statement, says his past trips didn't previously need to be disclosed, but going forward, he'll reveal them. Ethics at the Supreme Court has attracted the attention of Congress, with lawmakers in recent days calling for stricter rules and committee hearings. One idea is to withhold funding to the court until change happens. Some lawmakers want a formal ethics complaint process to be adopted. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Now focusing back here in the Treasure State, fish, wildlife and park biologists have been out on the rivers of southwest Montana this spring studying the health of the fisheries. To do that requires getting the fish to the surface without causing them harm. We take a closer look at the work of electrofishing this week in Fish and Wildlife. For the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks, counting deer, elk or even bear are fairly simple. But when it comes to counting and studying this habitat, that requires some special help. In fact, you might even be shocked by what they use to make that happen. I know they are. And to do that, we use electrofishing, which is a, a well-established sampling technique used throughout the world. And we use it here in the state to, to keep an eye on our, our trout populations in the streams and rivers throughout Montana, as well as other species and water bodies. A small shock is sent into the water, stuns the fish for a moment long enough for biologists to net them, study them, and then release them back into the water. Yeah, so electrofishing allows us to keep an eye on numbers of fish in this stretch, abundances, as well as the size structure, um, the aged size, lengths, weights of the fish that are in these reaches. And that gives us an over, overall idea of the, the health of the populations in these stretches. This is a rite of spring for FWP, and this year on the Lower Madison, numbers need some help. Uh, in the lower Madison we've run those numbers and it's been pretty stable over the last few years. Unfortunately, uh, brown trout abundances in the lower Madison are near historic lows. Um, rainbows are just below our long-term averages, um, but they've stabilized uh, the last three or four years and so we're working on ways that we can improve uh, the populations down there. While most anglers talk about the one that got away, Duncan and his team can share stories of the ones they let go. Any surprises while you're doing this? I mean, that's, it's, it's gotta be an interesting process going through this while you're doing it. Oh, it's always fun, because you never know coming around the corner uh, what you're gonna find. We got a couple uh, nice browns in the mid 20 inch range here. Um, occasionally we'll pick up cutthroat in this stretch and on the Madison. 
Um, so it's nice to get some of those surprises, bigger fish, some species that we don't see too much in some of the larger rivers anymore. Duncan says the information they gathered on this stretch of the Gallatin will be compiled soon, along with the rest of the data from all of Montana's rivers. And of course, it'll all be available from Fish, Wildlife and Parks. This week at the Bud Lilly Fishing Access Site on the Gallatin River, Chet Lehman, MTN News. Wow. There you go. How cool is that? It's really cool to watch them do really that. Really neat. And they, they really can learn a lot about the uh, fisheries by uh, mm -hmm. just that little simple procedure there too. Wow. It's good wow. stuff. Really neat. Yeah. Really, really neat. 640 now, time for a short